it's uh, a pinch me moment being here today after the last decade of um, playing with seaweed. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of Premium Seas. We're based in Coromandel Town. Um, just a, a little about uh, my experience in getting to, to where we are now. I discovered my gateway seaweed in 2011. Um, and I got excited. It was after a, after a trip over here with my wife who was uh, brought up in Coromandel. I went home, I turned it into a business and registered it, um, continued to work in the Australian Public Service and snuck out at morning tea to make calls to MPI and get Section 52 approvals to harvest and, and whatnot. Um, so um, the gateway seaweed, of course, was Undaria. Um, I got sucked deeper and deeper in and, and met um, a, a wonderful group of people. Many of you are here today. Um, and uh, I've, um, I've now sort of really excited about the opportunities here in, in New Zealand with seaweed. I've been here for two and a half years, living in Coromandel, and I should have done it earlier, <clears throat> a lot earlier. Okay, so a bit about um, the group. Um, this was uh, just after I came to New Zealand. I think I was about three or four kilos uh, lighter. Um, so I'm very fortunate that I've been able to form a group with decades and decades of marine farming experience. Um, this uh, provides us with access to water space, uh, barges, and importantly, that operational aspect, the expertise in tying knots. I can't tie knots, I'm learning. Um, so it's, uh, it's really been the reason that we've been able to kickstart some of the projects we've, we've been involved in. Now, this is Gilbert James, he's my, my mate and my, um, uh, my co-founder for Premium Seas. Uh, we also have, um, he, he founded, uh, or was a, a big part in founding the mussel farming uh, industry in Coromandel, and he's applying his skills over to, to seaweed now. We also have uh, Joe Cohenhaven, who is um, uh, highly experienced in seafood product development, uh, market access, and uh, now very, 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 very grateful. Um, a little bit about some of the projects and the products that I'm working on, and there are quite a few. Um, people talk about doing things, um, picking something and doing it properly. Um, I like to pick a lot of things, and um, that's working for me, um, and I'm going to find a way to, to make it easier uh, from here on in, hopefully. So um, we're producing, uh, we're wild harvesting under Section 52 Undaria. We're processing that into food. Um, we've been selling into Aussie now for oh, six or seven years. Um, we've exported to Japan in small scales. They wouldn't pay enough. Uh, but I learnt so much about the quality aspects and how to, um, how to, um, I understand the, the, the unique um, features of what uh, that particular market um, is looking for. If I can meet that, I think I can meet the Australian market. Um, increasingly, we're seeing interest from wholesale manufacturers, so those who are producing an end product and wanting seaweed as an input. That's really exciting. Um, for me, it means less processing, less packaging, uh, larger volumes. Um, so uh, that's something I'm really excited about. Scaling is very difficult with Undaria because we can't farm it. The issue is, while it's in abundance there, we can't access the consistency of quality and yield. So we spend a lot of money on a big barge going out to identify that the seaweed's not there or the next season it's somewhere else. It's very, very difficult and costly. Uh, we're working on for Coydon. We've been, uh, we picked up some equipment uh, a little over a year ago and spent um, six months in R&D developing uh, that product out of Christchurch. Uh, we've got commercial volumes now and we're looking at market, markets and trying to uh, determine the sort of partners, partners that we'll work with into the future. We're manufacturing from two types of seaweed, the Mizuku from Tonga and Andaria as well, using the sporophyll. Now, we have to import hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of mizuku because we can't access the consistent quality and yield of Andaria. I'd rather spend the money here. Um, bioactive extracts, um, we are uh, extracting other uh, bioactives from, from other seaweeds. 
um, and working with uh, large European companies, uh, Dutch company in, in particular is showing a lot of interest in uh, one of our products for um, a face cream. So we're now working through the challenges of trying to uh, scale up and um, <clears throat> uh, d develop more capability to do the volume and meet what they need. Okay, uh, more of the exciting stuff here, projects uh, continued. Right, seaweed cultivation. So we don't get anywhere unless we cultivate seaweed. Um, the, um, the Green Wave project, thank you very much, Bryn. Um, it's just so great that you finally got over here. Um, and I hope that uh, I can come and see you one day. Um, Enviro Strat, uh, University of Waikato, University of Auckland, uh, Premium Seas, Agri Sea in collaboration, um, running an end to end project. Um, my role within the project is to uh, trial the, uh, the, well, to operate a commercial scale hatchery in Coromandel, um, work out how to deploy 36,000 metres of seeded line, uh, how to harvest it, how to pre process it, so that Agri Sea can. Um, receive it and apply their product manufacturing expertise. So um, very, very exciting and a, and a great example of collaboration in uh, an emerging seaweed sector. Um, the, let me see here, uh, scallop farming. So, right, scallops, um, nothing to do with seaweed in one way, uh, but it is related through the approach that Green Wave in the US takes. So um, the Green Wave in the US farms multiple species in the one water space, yep. The opportunity came along for me to be involved in a, a, a feasibility trial around uh, collecting wild spat for, for scallops and uh, growing them up in lantern nets. Um, so in collaboration with uh, Nasui and University of Auckland, um, we've been farming, well, growing up scallops for some time now. The next stage is we're going to move on to, um, on to, uh, a larger um, project and look at the hatchery piece. So that's that's all very exciting. But it's a hobby. It's a hobby project. It's uh, um, but it, it's very exciting. I think it's good because we all know that dredging is destructive, um, and there's not enough scallops. Um, so there's plenty of uh, opportunities and, and barriers. Uh, obviously, multiple species of seaweed. Um, there's a, 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 a there's a huge. Um, what have we got? Nearly a thousand odd. Uh, species of seaweed in, in New Zealand. Um, and in fact, I think Wendy, last time she came to Coromandel, found a, another one. Um, I don't know what she named it, Richard, but, um, but uh, yeah, so picking a species of seaweed that you can cultivate, um, aligning that technical expertise piece to develop the hatchery, um, <laughs> all the way through to somebody who's going to buy it. Why would you, why would you farm something unless somebody's going to buy it? Um, so I've identified two or three that I want to work with. Um, they all align back to my um, opportunities in, uh, in Europe. And um, the, uh, the, the challenge there is for me to do the due diligence and engage with the rest of the industry. I don't want to do this alone. Um, we need to uh, identify and pull our resources and thinking. Um, let me see here, high value products, yep effective coordination and collaboration. So I, I see, geez, 10 years ago, I was talking to Lindsay and uh, Richard and a few others in the room, but now there's so many other people to talk to, it's quite overwhelming. The biggest opportunity that we have is what we're doing here today. Then we've got the Seaweed Association. Wow. Um, it's a really good narrative. So I think that is a test for us to get that piece right. Um, you know that, uh, Bren, you referred to the the piece around pre-competition and collaboration in Coromandel. They were all mates in the beginning and then they moved into the competitive state. Um, and I think we just need to come together and, and look at that as, a, as an approach for us as well. Um, the uh, biggest, uh, let's see, our oh, barriers, um, now I don't want to go on too much about the, um, the barriers and the challenges because they're just huge. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, I enjoyed speaking to Rebecca Clarkson, oh geez, 12, 18 months ago about um, uh, the regulatory framework. And it was a really good therapy session for me. So I was talking about <laughs> all, of the, um, all of the rigmarole I had to go through. So it's a real enemy for a developing sector. It's slow um, and it reduces confidence and uh, ultimately investment. And we're just left behind. Look at the great progress that the Aussies are going. 
um, uh, going out now, so it's really good to see progress over there too. So we need to yeah, get onto it and try and refine that process to make it easier for us to, uh, yeah. And I think Rebecca's going to talk to that shortly today. Um, I think that's about it for me. It's good to catch up. I'd love to talk more to all of you about what we're doing. <laughs> um, just name more projects for now. Um, so if you want to, oh, this is, uh, look at this, Andaria. Um, just prolific all over the lines. The problem is there's muscles are in the road. <laughs> this is the... <laughs> This is the Golden Shore, and this is the boat that we can pull alongside and harvest, you know, tons and tons and tons of that, that species. So my details are there. Please reach out. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>